Leo imekuwa siku njema kwa Kenya baada ya consensus Kipruto kuongozwa na riadha wenzake kunyakuwa nafasi za kwanza pili hadi tatu kwenye mbio za miti elfu tatu kuruka viunzi na maji Kipruto alishina mbio hizo na kupata medali ya dhahabu kwa kutumia dakika nane na sekunde kumi Abraham Kibiwota kichukua nafasi ya pili kwa dakika nane na sekunde kumi na mbili huku Emos Kiruya kifunga orodha ya watatu bora haya mejiri kwenye mashindano ya michezo ya jumuia ya madola huko Gold Coast Australia Canadian just tucked in nicely here. Maddie Hughes, plenty of experience. Will this be his night? He's going to need to sit on that shoulder. About a 6% drag coefficient. That is energy you can save if you can hang tough. The rest of the field are heavily strung out. Conceslas Kipruto in third now. And it's the smaller of the three Kenyans. Amos Karui, the world junior champion who leads. Kibi Watson's in. Conceslas Kipruto third, and still Hughes and Chemotai refuse to be dropped. It's a huge gap back to the two Welshmen, Thomas and Hopkins. They're in a separate battle for domestic honours. Karui, though, so good over that barrier. Still no move from Conceslas Kipruto. He's quite happy to let his two compatriots take this on. Well, they'll come down, they'll have just the two laps to go. Chimatai of Uganda is going to need to make a move at some point. He's going to need to be a little bit more strategic. The Canadian is going to need to maintain his concentration. He needs to be prepared to go when we start to see the pace go up, and it's going to start to happen now. Two laps to go in the men's 3,000-metre steeplechase. Kenya, one, two, and three. They're bidding for their sixth consecutive clean sweep in the race that they have dominated for so long. The favourite, Conceslas Kipruto, is in third. He's the reigning world champion. He's the reigning Olympic champion. The Commonwealth crown is the only one missing. Kipruto is motioning to Kibiwot there to come through and help him. There are team tactics at play here as Matty Hughes and Chemotai desperately try and stay in touch. And as I say that, the Ugandan allows three or four metres to grow between himself and Hughes. The Canadians in fourth. Can he break up this Kenyan triumvirate of excellence? Well, Chimatai of Uganda, Albert Chimatai, 10th at the 2017 World Championships, is in trouble. There is no comeback now. Great move, though, from the Canadian, moving up onto the shoulder. And one of the, one of the Kenyans now just starting to struggle. We are down to three. It's Karui who's been dropped. They take the bell in the final of the men's 3,000-metre steeplechase. Matty Hughes is aiming to become the first Canadian to win a medal in this event. Since 1994, Conceslas Kipruto, the world champion and Olympic champion, leads. Hughes is still there. Karui is now in fourth place, and he's beginning to lose further ground. It's the favourite leading. Hughes looking up into the big screen. Kipruto now stutters a little bit coming into that barrier, flicks his legs up to the left. Conceslas Kipruto looks round. He's motioning for Kimi Watt to hurry up. He wants it to be a Kenyan 1-2. So much conversation between the two of them. It's amazing that he's got the energy. Kimi Watt and Kipruto. He's beckoning him on. Kipruto doesn't want Hughes to finish on the podium. They're talking to each other. This is an extraordinary finish to this race. Conceslas Kipruto will surely pull away now. He's asking the crowd to respond. I've never seen such a confident finish. Kipruto takes it. Kimi Watt second. And Matty Hughes launches himself towards the line. And I think it will be the agony of a second consecutive fourth place finish for him because Amos Kirui ni siku njema kweli heko kwao uh, hebu sasa tuangazie siasa kidogo ambapo Kinara Mwenza wa NASA na kiongozi wa Waipa Kalonzo Musyoka amerejea kutoka ziara ya uangalizi wa uchaguzi katika maeneo ya Azerbaijan hebu tumsikize anyway so we are very happy to be back home uh, and of course talking to members of the media I went to a country that I discovered a lot of Kenyans know very little about. And this is one of the 27 EU member countries called Azerbaijan. And the capital is very easy, four letters, Baku, B-A-K-U. And Baku, I actually discovered, is slightly larger than Nairobi. And so you can see how ignorant all of us have been. It was my first time but it gave us an opportunity 
to observe elections in uh, that former Soviet uh, Soviet uh, Republic's country, mm. and now a member of EU, uh, with a population of about nine to ten million people. Um, and as I said, the capital city Baku, on the shores of the Caspian Sea. Uh, these are places you may have read about in geography. And, and oil rich because uh, the Caspian Sea region has a lot of uh, mineral resources. And so it's a country that is emerging in terms of uh, democratic practice, but a country also that saw a lot of conflict um, immediately after the breakup for a break away from the Soviet Union. Um, Armenian community there in conflict with Azerbaijan's. Um, but now they have had elections. Uh, this time, a WIPA Democratic Movement is a member of uh, the centrist Democratic International uh, with the headquarters in Brussels. So we were invited uh, to join uh, Centrist International um, in Portugal some two years ago. So in that capacity, I was invited as a party leader to join another, some other 23 international observers uh, to oversee this year's presidential election, which was on Tuesday. Uh, the other members, uh, the, the African members, actually we had a representative from Cape Verde. Uh, the Prime Minister of Cape Verde is actually the African, the chair of the African uh, wing of uh, Centris International. And as a, as a party that espouses uh, social democratic values, we found, very, we found ourselves very comfortable uh, in this company. Um, clearly, WIPA democratic movement is not right to the right. We are left of the center and therefore social democratic uh, organization. Uh, the other member was from uh, Botswana, uh, the official leader of the opposition there, and quite frankly, I, I get the sense after the the resignation or is it immediate leaving of office of President Ian Kama. I, I think he left precisely at the end of uh, his second term. And, and I think what Botswana people are doing is worth emulating in Africa. Um, my friend and brother Duma, the leader of the official position, also came along. So there are three of us, Cape Verde, Botswana and Kenya. And I think we did a good job trying to observe those elections. Um, although at the end of it, uh, the international observers numbering 900 compared to 20,000 local observers, one thing that was impressive was I never saw any posters. And I think this going forward, this is something uh, elected leaders in this country love to, to take account of, that uh, whoever will be making Thika Highway look as, as bad as it looks should be actually asked to clean it up <laughs> to uh, at least a week before the polling. So because we arrived there on the Monday and the official campaign period was over, we never saw any posters. The city looked very clean. So it must be that the mayor of Baku must have ordered everybody to remove their posters. And that's something I observed because every time we have an election in Kenya, it is that we, we, we actually pollute the environment with huge numbers of election material. And I think every candidate, some of them even use rangi ambao wezo katoa. Wanaenda wana spray. Wana spray. Fulani governor muspende muspende spray. And it lasts, I think, a whole five years. So it's something I personally learned because we must also look after environment. Voter turnout impressive at 74.5%. But the official leader, the man who would have given a President Aliyev a real challenge, was imprisoned <laughs> about four or five years ago. And he was not allowed even to contest because of that election, election uh, offense. If you have a criminal record, you can't run. And so uh, that's another thing. So it was like, in my view, it was a, a case of uh, what happened to Jubilee and four other, other political parties, call them uh, Kuro Court, <laughs> yeah? because the main 
the other guys were not able to run, and legally so, because they are uh, uh, clearly a presidential uh, hybrid system between parliamentary and presidential. Um, they were able to bring forward the date of the election. Uh, because this is what is happening. I've even seen that in Malaysia they're going to have elections on the 9th of May. And whenever in the UK, for instance, the Prime Minister of, of, of the UK thinks it's time to win an election, they always dissolve parliament and call for snap elections. This is a practice, particularly with uh, parliamentary uh, democracies. Sorry. I'm sorry, Diani. I said, I'm I said, I'm sorry. I said, 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 Tukiangazia masola ya uchaguzi ya matume ya uchaguzi humu nchini Ezra Chilobo ambaye ni afisa mkumtendaji wa IBC. Amepata pigo mahakamani baada ya mahakama kuamuru kwamba aende likizo ya miezi mitatu kama ilivyoamriwa na mwenyekiti wa tume ya uchaguzi IBC wa Fula Chebukati. Chebukati ya memtuma likizo ya lazima Chiloba kuruhusu uchunguzi kufanya dhidi ya tuhuma zinazoibuka kwenye kandarasi za tume hiyo. Chiloba alienda mahakamani kupinga hapo jana hatua hiyo ya Chebukati. The court had brief oral submissions from Mr. Wandabwa for the applicant and certified it urgent. The court notes that it has considered those submissions made yesterday in this ruling. The applicant was directed to serve the respondents to appear in court today so that directions could be given. When the application was called out this morning, Ms. Tagitonga and Ms. Anyango appeared for the second, fifth and sixth respondents. They asked for seven days to file their responses to the application. Ms. Awur, for the seventh respondent, also sought seven days to file appropriate responses. The first, third, and fourth respondents were not in court, as they were stated to be out of Nairobi. Ms. Tanjeru Kanyamba, Secretary General of the Kenya Independent Commission Workers' Union, also appeared and made an oral application to have the union enjoined in the petition as an interested party, the court directed him to file a formal application. In light of the requests by the present respondents for more time, Mr. Wandabwa urged the court to grant interim preservatory orders. In an effort to persuade the court to grant the interim preservatory orders, Mr. Wandabwa submitted that the seventh respondent's human resources and administration policies and procedures manual did not envisage compulsory leave and that the sending of the applicant on such leave was disguised suspension without compliance with contractual agreements as contemplated by the human resources and administration policies and procedures manual. On legal anchor to the interim preservatory orders, Mr. Wandabwa urged that the second schedule to the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission Act provided that a decision of the seventh respondent could only be validly made when there was a quorum of five commissioners. It was also submitted that compulsory leave was akin to a removal from office without due process. According to Mr. Wandabwa, the meeting where the decision to send the applicant on compulsory leave was taken did not have the requisite quorum. The interest of justice, the court was informed, tilted in favor of granting ex parte interim orders. Otherwise, if the litigation were left to run its ordinary course, the applicant would have served and completed the three months compulsory leave, rendering the proceedings academic or moot. Tuangazia kilimo sasa bodi ya mafak... Uh, kundradhi, bodi ya nafaka na mazao imesitisha ununuzi wa mahindi kutoka kwa wakulima maeneo ya Eldoret Ziwa na Moisbridge katibu katika sekta hiyo ya mimea katika wizara ya kilimo Kelo Harsame amesema bajeti ya wizara hiyo ya ununuzi wa mahindi imekamilika na hivyo hamna pesa zaidi za ununuzi wa mahindi hata hivyo wale wakulima waliouza mahindi kwa bodi hiyo watapokea malipo yao Harsame amesema uchunguzi utafanyika kubaini wakulima wanaouza mahindi yanayokuzwa humu nchini na kutupilia mbali wanaununua mahindi kutoka Uganda na kuyauza humu nchini.
Huko Eldoret wakulima waliandamana wakilalamikia hatua ya bodi ya mazao na nafaka NCPB kutangaza kuwa imesitisha ununuzi wa mahindi. Wakulima hao wanasikitishwa na hatua hiyo wakati ambapo wangali na mahindi uh, uh, yaliyojaa magunia chungu nzima yanayohitaji kuuzwa. Wanamtaka waziri wa kilimo Mwangi Kionjori kuondolewa katika wizara hiyo wakisema kwamba ameshindwa kutoa mwelekeo wa kusuluhisha tatizo hilo. Tusalie na kilimo waziri wa kilimo Mwangi Kionjori amedokeza kuwa serikali itazidi kukabiliana na viwavi viwavi kwa muda sasa wamekuwa kishambulia maeneo kadhaa humu nchini akihutubia wadau wa sekta ya elimu walio kongamana jijini Mombasa Kionjori amesema kwamba Kenya haijajitosheleza kwa chakula na ndilo lengo kula serikali especially in fighting the fall army worm. It is a real threat, a real threat. We should not be politicized because we are talking of a pest that is not known to Kenyans. You are talking of a pest that has lived in developed countries, America and the rest of the world, and they have not been able to clear it. They are only fighting it. In fact, they describe it as a marriage without divorce. Once they get you, you are in marriage. This pest is in marriage with our maize farmers. It is in marriage with our rice farmers. It is in marriage with our sorghum farmers. It is in marriage with more than 100 crops in the country. Other is people saying, oh, it is only feeding on maize. That is a lie. And there is no hibernation. When there is no maize, they are feeding on other plants. That is the way you should understand it. Otherwise, as a government, we have a responsibility to fight it. We have a responsibility to assure Kenyans. Kwengineko waziri wa ugati, wa ugatu zi Eugene wa Malwa ame wataka magavana kutenga visehemu vya ardhi vya ujenzi wa mabwawa ya maji katika county zao wakizungumza katika kijiji cha Arsin county ya Samburu wa Malwa amesema ujenzi wa mabwawa hayo utangarimu serikali takriban shilingi bilioni 30 na itasaidia pakubwa kuteka na kuhifadhi maji wa Malwa vile vile amesema ujenzi tayari umeanza katika baadhi ya county alikuwa kizungumza wakati wa kufidia familia 15 zilizoathirika na mafuriko huko Arsim Maralal tuko na mpango wa kujenga Maralal dam ambayo ni dam kubwa sana itakayosaidia uh, watu wa county hii na katika counties jirani ya uh, hapa Masabit E, tuko na ile Badasa Dam ambayo ilikuwa imekwama na sasa tunaiendelea e, kuikamilisha na hiyo ikikamilika pia itasaidia e, county jirani ya Masabit tukienda upande wa Isiolo pia tuna dam kubwa tunayojenga ya e, Isiolo Dam hii dam itasaidia eneo hili la Samburu itasaidia Isiolo na vile vile county ya Laikipia huko Laikipia pia tuna uh, dams tunazojenga e, Kahurura Dam na uyomereri dam na baringo eh, kwa gavana uh, pia tuna dam kubwa ambayo tuataka tu, tuijenge kule inaitwa Radat Radat dam hiyo hiyo pia rasaidia so that wakati eh, kuna mvua wakati wa mvua eh, maji badala ya kudhuru watu maji haya yaweze kuwekwa na yatumike eh, eh, baadaye kuna dams kubwa ambazo zitagarimu eh, karibu bilioni 30 kwenda mbele Upo mpango kabambe wa kaunti kumi eneo la mlima Kenya kushirikiana kwenye sekta ya afya kwa ufanisi wa tiba za magonjwa fulani. Gavana wa kaunti ya Tharakanithi Mudhomi Njuki amedokeza kwamba magavana wa kaunti hizo husika wamesha kutana marambili kwa ajili ya kuwapa wenyeji hudu mabora za afya. <tos> So we are easier and sterility is better managed. So we appreciate that. This stops. Uh, the stress is very simple. 
Yes, yes. Is that Mr. Zista? Is that you? Who are you? Mimi ni nani? Hans dear, can you open this? Now the microscope is here in the middle. They enter him like this. Stop. Stop. So only the head goes to the side of the head. Only the head? Yes. Only the head. Of course, for us to be a level 5 hospital, we must have one specialized department that we major in. And uh, we had thought that in Eastern and Mount Kenya region, if all of us specialize in one thing, which is uh, quite expensive, we not give our patient choices. Also, we don't really complement each other. So we are looking forward to Meru Hospital having one special unit, maybe cancer, and we're doing the heart, with Akanidi doing the reno, and uh, Kirinyaga doing something else different so that we are able to support each other and grow the units to be referral hospitals for Mount Kenya regions. Yeah, miswada kuhusu wanawake ni gumzo tu ama inatekelezwa kikamilifu. Je, yeah, miswada kuhusu wanawake ni gumzo tu ama inatekelezwa kikamilifu. Ndilo swali letu hii leo tunalojadili wakati ambapo Hamza Yusuf atakuwa ameandaa mjadala na Amran Mohamed ambaye ni mwakilishi wodi katika bunge uh, la county ya Garissa kuhusu mswada aliyowasilisha wakina mama. Nambari ya arafa ni 2255 au 